Let's test if the ESP32, boasting 240 MHz and 4 MB of RAM, can simultaneously play 6 animated GIF on 6 separate screens at the same time. We are going to use the stunning round screen. Yes, they are small, but they can render a palette of 65,000 colors. They are amazing. Our game plan is straightforward. We will use the animated GIF library by BitBank2 to load all the 6 GIF into RAM and play them on the screens. And how do we plan to connect our charming round screens? Through the ESP32 SPI bus or serial peripheral interface. It's a communication protocol between the microcontroller and SPI devices like our screens. Every screen is linked to the SPI bus. So the pins of every screen are wired to the same pins on the SP32, except for the chip select pin. Let's prepare our test. First, I have to set up the correct driver for the TFT SPI graphic library for the round screen. Next, I specify the board that I will use in the Arduino IDE, and I am using a standard ESP32 dev module. Finally, I choose the UJAP partition scheme, because all the GIF will be loaded alongside the code into the memory of the ESP32. Now my breadboard is ready. Let's start the test. I have already set up the wires for the connection of the first screen. Let's place it on the breadboard and be ready to receive the first lines of code to play the hyperspace animation. That's a very solid start. I like the hyperspace animation. It truly brings the screen to life. Now let's open the serial monitor as we are going to keep track of the frame per second for the first screen. And it's now playing at around 20 frames per second. And as we add more screen, it's logical to expect a decrease in FPS. Now it's time for the second screen. I am wiring it to the SPI bus by reusing the connection on the first screen. The second GIF features a HUD interface, reminiscent of those futuristic displays often seen in sci-fi movies and props, adding a touch of fictional complexity. And as we expected, the FPS is lower and jumping from 9 to 15, so it's around 13 FPS or so almost half of what we had before. Let's continue and add a third screen to the setup on the breadboard. This time, let's play the Nostromo GIF inspired by the movie Alien. And I have a particular fondness for both the movie and this GIF. The FPS is still around 12 and the animation remains visually appealing. Until now, the ESP32 is truly living up to expectations. Now I am concerned about the power consumption of the SP32 since it is powering all the displays so far. And according to the official datasheet from Espressif, the maximum IO output current is 1200 milliamps. And for safety, I aim to keep the consumption below 600 milliamps. And I will monitor the current consumption with a USB power meter. And with three screens, the ESP32 is consuming 180 milliamps this means we are comfortably within the safe limit. We are not going to stop there. Let's add a fourth screen. And I have chosen a Star Wars X-Wing animation that I personally crafted using Adobe After Effects. The nuance movements and details subtly enhance its presence, enhancing its overall visual appeal. I like it very much. The frame rate has seen a slight dip, settling around 10 FPS. And as for power, we're looking at a consumption of 220 milliamps. You know the drill. Let's add another screen, the fifth one. This one is another kind of HUD interface. I like the animation of this HUD very much, with a TIE fighter appearing out of nowhere. Part of it was created with artificial intelligence using Microsoft Bing Image Creator. And the FPS is now overing at 6 to 7, and the power consumption is 250 milliamps, still within safe limits. But we can now see that the animations are less fluid. But still, the SP32 managed to animate all of them so far. Time to add the last screen and see what happens. 
we see BB-8 running slowly. Everything is now slowed down. The FPS is now very low at 4 to 5. And with all 6 round screens in action, the entire setup draws only 300 milliamps. I'm still astounded by the capabilities of the ESP32 microcontroller and this little round screen. But there is more. In my exploration with these screens, I made a fascination observation. When I uploaded only one GIF and played it on the first screen only, the other screens mirror the same animation, and the FPS shut back up to 20, with BB-8 sprinting at full speed. This suggests me that the SPI bus is very fast, and the real computing demand comes from reading and decompressing the GIF from memory. Tell me what's your own explanation in the comments below. Now everything you've seen up to this point runs on a single core of the SP32. We have the potential to tap into the second core, enhancing the processing capability for reading and decompressing the GIF. This might be an exciting direction for our next experiment. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Your comments and feedback below are valuable to me, so please share your thoughts. Thanks for watching guys.